What's up guys, this is Mike Ross Maitland here and I am here with Cindy and Cindy's here to talk to us a little bit about um, how she came to do the TEFL course in Barcelona um, her experiences of teaching and maybe just some advice for you guys and we have our little friend Rufus here who is just chilling out in that plant pot um, hopefully he's not going to distract us too much but Cindy, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thanks. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing good, I'm a bit bunged up with a cold so Hopefully you can get my Scottish accent through here and it's not going to be too yeah. deep. Um, but Cindy, there's lots of people who are going to be watching this who mm -hmm. haven't really been to Spain before, haven't really um, had any experience teaching, they're going to be brand new um, and they want to learn from you like tips and things that they can sort of help them to come and fulfill this dream because it is a dream of theirs mm -hmm. to come and teach English abroad and to teach English in Spain more specifically. Now we've been chatting before already mm -hmm. so I know you a little bit and uh, um, Cindy's actually from Holland right? Is that yeah. right to say or Netherlands? It'd be better to say the Netherlands. Netherlands sorry. <laughs> It'd be better to say the Netherlands. Netherlands um, and uh, you've actually been teaching for how long now? I've been teaching English and Dutch for five years now. Five years? Five awesome. Years. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about how you started and a, bit, a little bit about where you taught to begin with and where you teach now? Okay. Well, I was living in Marseille at the time and yep. uh, because of the French I couldn't do my old job anymore because uh, I was a social worker before. So I had to look for something else to do and I thought that teaching English might be a good idea. Awesome. Um, and there were no TEFL courses available in Marseille at, at that time. So I was thinking of other places to go to. I love Barcelona. I have family here. So I figured I'll have accommodation uh, and I'll have a nice time. Let's go to Barcelona. <laughs> uh, that's how I came to go to this particular TEFL course. And after the course, I, I taught in, in the south of France, in Marseille, for awesome. three years before coming back to Barcelona. And is the south of France as nice as people say, like it's nice and sunny all the time and uh, it's lovely people. Not. It's the same climate really as Barcelona. It's exactly the yeah. same climate. It's a good it's a good job market as well. Mm, mm. I do think that Marseille is very particular as a city. I don't think it's for everyone. Um, but it's very it was very interesting to be there for that time. So it's interesting that you came all the way from Marseille to come to Barcelona to do the course, then you went back to Marseille. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, I'm going to live in Barcelona again a little yes, bit later. It's still the family, really, that, that right. made us go here. My, my husband is from Barcelona. Ah, I uh, see. He's Catalan, and his family lives in El Prat de Llobregat, gotcha. just outside Barcelona. So gotcha. we basically came here because we have kids now, and we thought it would be good to stay close to family. Awesome. So it was either Barcelona or Holland, the Netherlands, and uh, Barcelona won. Awesome, awesome. So the course that you did is the course that Tefl Heaven um, is promoting here in yeah. Barcelona. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the course and in general how it prepared you to teach English and whether there, you have any tips for anyone who's just about to start it? Um, I think the course has different elements to it. Of course, um, it teaches you to teach. Uh, which is good. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that even if you have no experience teaching, mm -hmm. that you will get some of the basics. And it also teaches you, it, it gives you a bit of a refresher of grammar. I okay. think especially for native speakers, some things are not always obvious when it comes to English grammar. Mm. And then it's just mm. nice to have uh, some very, very quick uh, looks at, at English grammar. So I liked it for that. And one of the reasons I really picked this school mm -hmm. is that they have real students uh, for, for, gotcha. your, for your practice. Uh, a lot of schools, um, they, they let you practice teaching, but mm -hmm. with the other students, uh, the other people in your class. And gotcha. here you have real students, so you get real questions, which mm. I think is the best preparation uh, for later on. Uh, and it means that you can go into your job search with a bit more confidence, yeah. uh, because you already have worked with uh, people mm. with a level one of English, like an, an A1, mm. A2 level of English. Mm. Uh, you have already seen those classes and it just, it helps, I think. Yeah, I mean, because some, some type of courses, and it's not, it's not too bad, like you do teach your peers and you get that experience in standing up and being the centre of attention, right? But when you have the real students, that's very when... Very different. Very different, isn't it? Because the Spanish thrown in the works, they're not as receptive, 
they're not as easy to please you because your peers oh, no. are, right? Oh no, they're not. Normally, they're not that easy to please your peers. <laughs> no, I, it's it's much easier, I think, to teach real mm. students um, mm. because they have a very different motivation, of course, and also yeah. their questions are different. Their questions are, I find, less hard than any question a peer would come up with. Gotcha. So I was very happy to have that as well. So. Um, did you do any teaching before you did the TEFL course? Did you teach at all before that time? I did. I did okay. actually. Yes. I was a trainer in my former job. Right. So I okay. used to train. I used to train inside prisons. I used to train uh, <laughs> delinquents. Uh, so um, kids were just that little bit harder because the prisoners were so easy. No, just joking. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. No. So I, I taught before. I taught at a wow. university and I taught in a, in a prison. Oh, but you weren't teaching prisoners, right? Or were you? Yeah. You were teaching prisoners. I was teaching prisoners. And you were training them in vocation, uh, vocational no, stuff. No, social skills. Social skills. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that's really interesting. Yes, it was, but uh, impossible to do in French or uh, Spanish or Catalan. So I had to, I had to find something else to do. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yep. So now we talked about you teaching a little bit in Marseille. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people who will be coming and want to go in Barcelona. Uh, they're not really going to be too interested in teaching in France. Yes. So let's talk about Barcelona then. Um, so what's the job market like here for a non-native English speaker? Because you're non-native, yes. right? And actually, when I was talking to Cindy before, I thought she was Irish because you could hear some Irish uh, Irish words pronunciation, but just it was that you have some friends who are Irish, and she's actually Dutch. So I got that yes. well wrong. Um, but what's the job market like for a non-native English speaker I, here? I have to say that... It seems to be less of a problem here than it was in France, right? Because um, there's just so much work that there is plenty of work also for non-native speakers. Mm. Um, and as they already told us during the TEFL course, uh, you can also turn it into a benefit. It means that mm. um, you know uh, how hard it is to, to learn English. Uh, yeah. And every time your students complain about oh, regular verbs or this or that, you can be like, I know. <laughs> I've had to study all of that as well mm, uh, mm, and somehow mm. I find that some of my students also kind of like the fact that I'm uh, a non-native speaker because they're like she can do it then mm, uh, mm. hopefully so can I that's um, awesome so that's definitely something that I try to emphasize like of course you can <laughs> this is what I did and if you work at it you can do it too now and um, we talked a little bit earlier about like what, what are some of the hard parts of coming and teaching English in Spain um, do you want to repeat some of the things that you were saying earlier about the beginning yeah. bits? Yeah. I think that when you, when you start out, normally you don't have that much of a network yet and mm. you just you need to work it, you know, you, mm. just, you just need to work it. Um, you need to accept whatever job you can get because mm. a job, if you do it well, if you, mm. uh, if you prepare, if you show up in time, if you mm. do evaluations correctly, um, then it will lead to more work. Um, yeah. So you need to you need to build, uh, build a network, build experience. Uh, you need to invest a bit. Uh, that means mm. that the first year you may have to spend quite a bit of time traveling from one class to another. Mm. Um, mm. Time online, you know, preparing uh, nice profiles for you as a teacher. Gotcha. Uh, you need to invest the time, and you may not see a lot of money at first, but mm -hmm. you will if you just keep keep going, you keep gotcha. going, and if you gotcha. do the job well. Gotcha. So it's kind of like uh, it's almost like your 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 own business, right? You're trying to market yourself. In a way, yourself. it is. In a way, it is. Yeah. I mean, some people are very lucky, and they can they can find a language school, and they can teach uh, the four or five evenings a week, hmm. and and already that would give you enough money to last. If you share an apartment hmm. in Barcelona hmm. uh, with one job like that, you'll have enough money to eat well uh, and, and to, to do perfectly fine. Um, you might also find some extra private students or websites mm. uh, to have that little bit extra so that you can travel during the holidays and, <laughs> and things like that. Um, it, it, like you should be fine, but yes, you need to be prepared to, to you know, to put some, some time into acquisition. Gotcha, gotcha. Now you're a little bit older than the general gem demographic, <laughs> than, than the general demographic. <laughs> No, you're, you're not old, you're older. Because yeah, um, 80% of the people that come um, mm. on our programs, uh, you guys out there, uh, you are um, young, 22 to 25 
Um, mm. And I know you're not 25. You're possibly no. still in your 20s, though. I'm not no, too sure. No, um, no, possibly not. But, no, no, no. But there'll be some people that in the other 20% that'll be like, huh, OK, well, should I go to yeah. Barcelona? Like, how's it going to be for me as someone that's not in their 20s? Yeah. Um, how am I going to be able to survive? How is it going to be socially and stuff like that? Like, what's generally your outlook on that? Well, I think some jobs, it helps to be a bit older. Mm. Uh, I mostly teach business English because I can't do the evening classes. I have children. Gotcha. I mostly do business English. It kind of helps to not be 23. Because <laughs> people figure she has some experience. Even yeah. if that experience is not in business, yeah. um, still, you can walk in there, look the part, and they'll buy it. <laughs> um, so in that sense, you know, age can help. And even in mm. things as talking with parents of children, it can also sometimes help to be a little bit older mm. um, in my case to, to also have children of my own mm. I think that also means that I can more motherly like well perhaps like mm. you you may also be able to be more empathetic to some of their worries um, mm. so I think it can also be a benefit so what we're, we're going to wrap up in a second but mm. I just had a, a question like what is the highlight for you of living in Barcelona and, and teaching English like what um, I know I've taken you off guard with this, but no, what's, no, what's, it's fine. what's the, um, the, the, the biggest the two, benefit? I think they're two different things, of course. Living in Barcelona mm. and teaching English. Okay. I love teaching English because I think that Spain is a country where people are not necessarily having an easy time. Economically, mm. people are struggling. And English really, it helps them. You know, people truly believe it will get them a better job, it will give their children a better future. Mm. To be able to play a part in that, I think, mm. is, is amazing. So, I love teaching because mm. I know that when my students get it, it's going to really, really help them. Awesome. That's why awesome. I love the job. And living in Barcelona, I mean, God, it's beautiful, the weather is very nice, not too crazy about the summer, but <laughs> all other months of the year, it's amazing to be here. It's a, it's a lovely country, people are friendly, food is good. Mm. What more do you want? Awesome. Well, I'm loving it so far. I've only been here a day, yeah. um, and I've hardly <laughs> seen I've hardly seen anything yet. But yeah. just the the vibe and the the culture so far has yeah. taken me taken my breath away. And I thought I should have brought my wife here. Mm. Um, but she's back home with my kids, yeah. <laughs> uh, dealing with them. So thank you, Emily, for uh, dealing with mm. that. But uh, I thank you so much, Cindy, for being my guest today. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you guys are interested in teaching English in Barcelona and doing our TEFL course in Barcelona, then comment below or message us or do whatever. Like You can find us, your brainy, you can use Google, whatever you want, um, and we will give you information. We can set up an information session as well, 30 minutes video call for free. Um, and we can also give you some salary versus living cost guides, and we can give you tons of other stuff. And if you want to apply, there's an apply link as well. So thank you very much, guys, and see you in the next video.